Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Today on The Young and the Restless Lily holds firm with Billy, Devin delivers good news and Summer pushes Kyle's buttons. Credit, HowardWise slash All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. At Crimson Lights, Summer updates Phyllis on getting a judge to stop Kyle from taking Harrison to Paris. Phyllis asks how Kyle took it. Summer says he's freaking out because he's realized he can't do whatever he wants when it comes to their son. Phyllis is relieved for her. Summer tells her mother none of this would be happening if she hadn't listened to her. She goes on about her great suggestions. Phyllis warns her to document everything and always go through the courts. She'll always be in her corner. Summer appreciates her. Phyllis tells her daughter she went through a lot and deserves this outcome, but she has to ask, isn't your heart breaking just a little bit? Summer insists he's not upset at all. She won and Kyle lost. Phyllis says, and Harrison? How do you think not going to Paris will affect him? Summer scoffs that the boy didn't even know what Paris was until his head was filled with adventures by Claire. She went on about how he was excited for the trip. Summer pulls out the drawing Harrison made her, wishing she could share in the fun. Phyllis says Claire obviously gave it to her, to make her feel bad. Summer says it worked. She feels guilty. But she should be the one doing fun things with him, not some nanny. Do you think I'm being unreasonable? Phyllis says it doesn't matter what she thinks, only what Summer feels. She feels Kyle is trying to squeeze her out of Harrison's life while he's jumping into bed with Audra Charles either literally or figuratively. He needs to understand his actions affect other people. Phyllis warns that he'll retaliate so she needs to figure out next steps. Summer has no idea what he'll do. I don't know Kyle anymore. Not this version of him at least. He's so wrapped up in what he wants and everyone around him has to fall in line. It scares the hell out of her. Kyle enters the Abbott house where Claire and Harrison are reading a book about Paris on the sofa. Harrison is bubbling over with excitement about going up the Eiffel Tower. Kyle tells his son they won't be able to do it this time. He's not going to be able to take him and Claire on the trip. Harrison asks if he did something wrong. Kyle says of course not. It's just a business trip and he'll be busier than he thought. Claire talks up the things they can do at Geno City and tells him that now his mom won't have to miss him so much. Harrison was sad his mom couldn't come. I guess it's Oak if we don't go to Paris. Kyle hugs him and looks gratefully at Claire. Kyle tells Harrison how well he's handled this and promises that they'll go to Paris another time. Harrison asks if Claire can come. He says of course. Harrison asks if his mom can come too. Kyle says they'll talk about it later. The kid is sent off to the kitchen and Kyle thanks Claire for helping him out. He laments that Summer doesn't want him happy unless she's around. It's always about her. Claire shushes him. So the boy doesn't hear. Kyle's sure Summer will but mouth him and complains that Harrison is disappointed thanks to her. He's nervous about what she'll try to pull while he's away. What I need is somebody here who can keep an eye out. Somebody I can trust. Claire asks. You mean me? Kyle is desperate. Summer is liable to pull anything while he's gone. He just needs her to let him know if she does. At Chancellor. Billy pulls Lily into the office to look at the new company logo he had drawn up. She looks, and it says Abbott in bold letters over Chancellor. She says it sends the statement that Abbott is driving the bus and Chancellor is the passenger. She argues that Chancellor is the most established company. They don't sell cosmetics there. Abbott Chancellor means nothing to no one. Billy disagrees. Lily's not surprised. Bill crows about them having their first disagreement as partners. It's exhilarating, isn't it? Lily gives him an exasperated look. Lily agrees that this is a new start for Chancellor, but she wants the transition to be smooth. The Abbott name isn't bringing anything of substance and it should be more subtle in the logo. She thinks it should be Chancellor Abbott. Billy says, fantastic. Consider it done. Nikki finds Victoria looking at Victor's portrait in his office. She asks how it feels to be back. Victoria's ambivalent, but she'll get over it. Nikki asks if she's just doing this for her father. Victoria asks if she's given any thought to Victor's proposal that she take over Chancellor, if he's able to take it from Billy and Jill. Nikki says the word if isn't in his vocabulary. She spent a lot of hours last night wondering what Catherine would think. Victoria thinks she'd rest easy knowing Nikki was in charge. 
Mickey needs something from Victoria before she decides. If Victor takes Chancellor, Billy will take a big fall. I need to know how you feel about that. Victoria feels that Billy is being unfairly blindsided. But there's no point in talking to her father about it. He's ignoring the fallout for her family. And worse, Victor seems to relish the idea of humiliating him. Nikki says Billy's given him plenty of reason not to trust him. Victoria says they've all disappointed each other at one time or another. Nikki says Victor's vindictiveness has put an ugly light on all of this. Victoria wonders what she'll say to her children when they find out their grandfather blew up their father's career. Billy doesn't deserve this at all. He'll see her not warning him as an unforgivable betrayal, and I wouldn't blame him. Victoria used to think that her father had a soft place in his heart she could get to, but she's not sure it exists. Nikki's sure Billy will land on his feet. He always does. Victoria says this is different. Jill has given him the ability to prove who he can be. This might make him feel like a failure to his parents, and that could crush him. Nikki realizes she's thinking about warning him. If you're waiting for me to stop you, I'm not going to. She reminds her that Victor said warning him won't change anything. Victoria notes that her father's unlikely to forgive her. Nikki says he's hoping she'll put the family first for her sake. Victoria needs to know, is running Chancellor something you really want? Nikki was asking herself that all night and went back and forth. It's much bigger than Newman Media. They debate and Victoria asks what's holding her back. Nikki says it's just happening so fast. Victor wants to move fast while Billy's finding his footing and there's Lily to consider. Would she want to stick around in a lesser position? Victoria feels that whatever she decides, that shouldn't change her plans. She's sure her mother's up for the challenge. But you have to want it. Mom. Nikki does want it. Very badly. Devin shows up at Chancellor and Billy greets him as he leaves the office. Lily tells Devin if he's there to argue. Please make it quick. Devin says he's there to share some good news with his sister. Abby and I are getting married. Lily grins and asks if he did it old school and got down on one knee. Devin says he will, but he did it in the park. They were talking about her taking Lily's place at Winters. Lily jokes that he did it to show her she doesn't matter. She's really happy for him. When's the wedding? Devin says that depends on Ashley. Lily will wait for the save the date. They embrace and express their love. Devin spots the Avid Chancellor logo and muses. Looks like someone's wasted no time at all. Devin asks if Lily will let Billy get away with this. Lily says she already sent him back to the drawing board. Devin's sure he'll keep pushing until he pushes her out the door. Lily plans to prove her brother wrong. She doesn't want to have this conversation anymore. She's really happy for him and Abby. And when they set a date, she'll help with wedding preparations. Devin says he's happy. They can at least have this connection still. They express their love and embrace. Once alone, Lily looks at Billy's logo and sighs. In the hallway, Billy meets up with Devin by the elevators and asks if he found new office space yet. Devin says, You can't wait to get rid of me, can you? He's eager to stop seeing him as well. Billy was just making small talk. Devin had something to say to him. At the Abbott house, Claire asks Kyle if he's asking her to be a spy. Kyle would just like her to let him know if Summer made some preemptive move for custody while he's away. Claire says it's not like she'd try to take Harrison to live with her before the trial. Kyle's not so sure. Claire points out Summer already doesn't trust her, so Kyle apologizes. It was a bad idea. Claire tells him it would make her life more complicated. Harrison reappears and Kyle suggests they all go for ice cream. At the park, Summer asks Phyllis what she thinks of Niagara Falls as a place for her and Harrison to visit. She has a lot of places she wants to go with him. Phyllis hedges. Maybe Paris. Summer feels she's missed out on a lot not living with him every day. Phyllis agrees the time goes by so fast. She gets choked up saying you never get it back. Summer knows she's thinking about Daniel. Phyllis knows she did it to herself. No one has to remind me of that, but it kills me all the time I miss with him. That's all. Summer doesn't want to have those regrets. Phyllis assures her she'll do everything by the book and advises her not to miss out on this opportunity. They're talking about the godsend of Kyle going to Paris and Phyllis suggests Summer take some time off to spend time with Harrison. Why don't you ask Claire to leave early so you can spend some quality time with your son? Summer decides she's right. Phyllis reminds her to take lots of photos so the judge knows she's the one spending time with her son while Kyle's away. Suddenly, Kyle, Claire, and Harrison appear. At Newman, Nikki tells Victoria, it's not just the challenge of running Chancellor, 
It's the connection to Catherine that makes it so special. She was her mentor and paved the way. She'll feel she's giving something back to her to honor her memory. Victoria paces. She decides she won't tell Billy. If this is what you want, then I want it for you. But it's far from a done deal. Her dad has a way of underestimating Billy sometimes. Nikki hates putting her in this position. Victoria says it's fine. She's dealt with Billy's wrath before. Nikki asks, What about the kids? Victoria will remind them this is the Newman way. They hug. At Chancellor, Billy asks Devin why they're still butting heads. He's looking forward to the Winter's Music Festival. Devin snarks, Don't expect a VIP ticket. Billy wonders if he'll continue to be pissed off all the time. Devin just wants to know what he said to Lily to convince her that it's a good idea to stick with him. They all know he's going to self-destruct. If you end up dragging Lily down with you, or toss her aside when you don't need her anymore, just know that you'll have made more of an enemy out of me than you already have. You got that, Paul. In the park, Harrison rushes up to Summer and tells her they're not going to Paris anymore. Summer asks, What happened? The kid says his dad will be too busy working. Phyllis tells Kyle he shouldn't have gotten the boy's hopes up with his flimsy plan. Kyle says Harrison is being brave and such a good sport that they came to the park to get some ice cream. Harrison says Claire has lots of fun things for them to do while his daddy's gone. Summer tells him she's going to take time off work so the two of them will have so much fun. Harrison cheers. 